Before I begin this episode, I wanted to tell you about a true crime podcast that I listen to. It's called Invisible Choir. But instead of me telling you about it, here's a little clip. I'm Michael Ojibwe, host of Invisible Choir, a true crime podcast that explores the most heinous murders through investigative storytelling and primary source audio. We'll take you on an unforgettable emotional journey to the crime scenes themselves as we explore the individual and community impact behind some truly horrendous and often preventable crimes. They slammed the kid on the ground and stabbing their baby out here in the middle of the They're stabbing their baby? Yes, he's dead on the ground outside. And they're yelling. With 911 calls, police interrogations, and actual recordings. I shot my wife in the temple of her head. I thought I killed her. And um, I put her in the freezer. I checked on her at night. And I did. These are the stories of the victims of under-investigated crimes. Their voices crying out in unison from beyond the grave, for they are the Invisible Choir. Download Invisible Choir today on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Military murder is an independent project and is not endorsed by the Department of Defense or any military component. The views expressed are those of the host. The content of this podcast is not meant to be legal or medical advice. Warning. This episode contains graphic details of murder and is not suitable for young listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, True Crime Army. I am your host, Marco, and this is a true crime podcast where I focus on crimes committed by military members and veterans. But don't worry, you don't have to know anything about the military to listen, I promise. You just have to be a true crime enthusiast. And if that's you, welcome home. True Crime Army, isn't it nuts how military murders are coming to light in the media now? It's insane. Well, I am here to tell you all about them. But I don't discriminate. Although I focus the majority of my stories on U.S. military cases, today I want to bring you an international case. Yes, Did you know that military murder has listeners in over 140 countries? That's right. That's probably because we have military members in every single country imaginable. Well, today's case is a case out of Germany, an unsolved murder that took place back in 1993 at Royal Air Force Base Gutterschlau. But although the case occurred in Germany, it involves the daughter of a Scottish Army soldier. And guess what? This is a case that although cold, One of you may hold the key that may help investigators solve this 27-year-old cold case. Join me today as I discuss Operation Gemini, a recently reignited investigation into the murder of 16-year-old Christina Menzies, the daughter of a Scottish Army soldier. Now, let's dig in. My sources for this case include a 1995 Parliament Inquiry Q&A, a BBC Crime Watch documentary, and articles from Forces.net, Mirrors.co, Glasgow Times, The Herald Scotland, and The Guardian. Christina Menzies was born to Christine and John Menzies when they were in their 20s. The family was from Glasgow, Scotland, but they were a military family. John Menzies served with the British forces. Specifically, he was an administrator, Christina was a pretty girl born in the late 70s. She loved English and reading and she loved kids and she hoped to one day become either a social worker or a journalist. It's unclear to me, but I believe that she may have been an only child since I never read about her having any siblings in any of the articles that I read. When Christina became a teenager, her parents sent her off to boarding school. By the early 90s, Christina had completed two years of boarding school and she was reunited with her parents. Once she returned to Scotland, her family packed up their belongings and, like any good military family, began an assignment in another country, Germany, to be exact. By all accounts, the big move was uneventful for everyone until June of 1993. On Saturday, June 12, 1993, Christina Menzies, 16 years old at the time, she attended the Rhine Army Summer Show. The Rhine Army Summer Show is a big deal. A quick search of the internet states that the RASS, as it is known, has developed into the largest Anglo-German event that British soldiers, that British forces organized. 
If you've ever visited a German festival, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For the 50 year anniversary of the RASS, which took place in 2002, it included 200 trade stands, over 100,000 visitors. And after it was all said and done, they raffled off a car. Well, in 1993, at the time of this story, Christina went to that show. After the show, she obtained permission from her parents to go to the club to dance. The disco, as it was called back then, was called Club 47, and the club was a military club located at the Royal Air Force Base, Gutterschlau. At about 11.30 p.m., Christina's parents showed up to the club ready to pick up Christina. Christina came outside, slightly annoyed that her parents had showed up so early. She begged and pleaded, like teenagers often do, for more time. Apparently, the club closed at midnight and she just wanted to stay until the very end. Fine, 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 her parents reluctantly agreed. Even though she was with a drunk staff sergeant at the time that she was chatting with her parents, but they allowed her to continue the night anyway. Her parents, who were in their mid-30s at the time, they found a place to grab a coffee or a tea while they gave their blossoming 16-year-old girl the freedom that she so desperately craved. Now, what happened next is a little unclear, or at least there's two versions of events that I've seen reported, but I'll tell you both. First, at around midnight, the Menzies showed up to Club 47 looking for their girl, but she was nowhere to be found. They immediately suspected that something was wrong because this was very unlike Christina. They immediately call military police, and when the military police arrive, they aren't too convinced that anything is wrong with Christina. They think maybe she's just run off and she will eventually show up. But the Menzies are adamant, something is wrong. They beg the military police to go inside Club 47 and search for her. This was the last place that she had been seen. But the MPs refuse to go inside, citing the fact that they are carrying their service weapons and the club does not allow firearms. Well, the Menzies are rightfully pissed. The MPs attempt to appease the Menzies by saying that they are going to search all the cars in the parking lot, but the Menzies indicate that that never happened. The MPs interview everyone coming out of the club, including a Lance Corporal, someone whose statement will become important later in this story. According to reporting by The Guardian, someone remembers seeing Christina climbing outside of the bathroom window of the club around midnight. The Menzies eventually go home in agony, wondering where their child is, but all they can do is just sit at home and wait. Okay, so that was the first version that I saw, and the second version is slightly different, in that the Menzies, they go home, or they went home after they saw their daughter at 11.30 p.m., and then they become worried when she doesn't come home. So in any event, They did report Christina missing almost immediately, and it appears that the MPs thought it was no big deal. No big deal until Sunday, June 13th, when someone reported seeing the body of a girl in a field not too far from the Autobahn, about 10 kilometers from the military base. The Pulitzer show up to the small town of Spexard, and sure enough, it was the body of 16-year-old Christina Menzies. She was dead. Investigators arrive on scene to start taking notes and investigating the case. On scene is a forensic pathologist who determines that Christina was killed at the scene where she was found. She had died by strangulation, and oddly, her shoes were missing. The evidence at the scene indicated that Christina had been wrapped in a Union Jack duvet cover, but the duvet cover was also missing from the scene. Of course, once they found Christina, the military police, they realized that they were wrong in assuming that she had just run away. Because Christina was found off base, the German authorities investigated the case, at least initially. However, military police go back and begin re-interviewing Club 47 patrons from the night in question. And during that questioning, they bring in that Lance Corporal that I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to be revealing his name for reasons that will become clear later, but you can check out my sources and find his information among the articles if you so feel like sleuthing. Okay, so anyway, this Lance Corporal, initially he denied seeing Christina Menzies at all that night. He said, nope, never seen her, don't know what you're talking about. But then upon further questioning, he finally admitted that he was with Christina that night 
that she went missing. Wait, what? Okay, that's kind of a big deal. Why would he lie about this to begin with? And then she shows up dead? Wait, what happens next is even more suspect. When it comes to vitamins, we all deserve to be a little bit of a skeptic. And if you are, that's a good thing, especially when it comes to vitamins, which is why I choose to take the Ritual Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Ritual created a clinically backed multivitamin for women who are 18 and over. Ritual's multivitamin supports brain health, bone health, blood health, and provides antioxidant support. And above all else, Ritual has traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. I've always, or almost always, been a vitamin consumer, but I never liked the taste, chalky and honestly just nasty. I often wondered what all those ingredients even meant on the label, but I figured, hey, I needed the vitamins, so I just put up with the horrid taste and the ingredients I couldn't even pronounce. But that is now an issue of the past, ever since I found Ritual, because Ritual comes packed with nine key nutrients in two capsules per day. So you can take your vitamins and relax knowing that you are in good hands. Another thing is that Ritual is packaged in a minty capsule that will leave you feeling refreshed. I've been using Ritual Essential for Women for two months now and I couldn't be happier. So listen up, no more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. And right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash military10 to start Ritual or to add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a therapist, someone that you could talk to in a judgment-free zone? Maybe you have thought about it, but you were scared away by the thought of taking the first step, or maybe you thought therapy wasn't affordable. Try Talkspace. By doing virtual therapy, Talkspace has made getting people help easy, accessible, and affordable. Y'all don't know this, but some things in my life recently have really gotten me down. I wasn't quite sure how to get out of the funk. I wasn't sure how to get back up. So I figured I would try therapy because I was sure that it would definitely not make things any worse. And I'm so glad that I tried it. I have found new coping mechanisms to deal with stress and I'm now looking forward to my future. Talkspace makes it easy to find a therapist that you like and it's so convenient to do everything from the comfort of wherever you are because life sometimes gets hectic. Sometimes I take my calls in my office, sometimes I take my calls in the car. Life is mobile and therapy should be too. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you and it's typically done within 48 hours. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationship issues, and much more. And right now, as a listener of this show, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash military murder. To match with a licensed therapist today, visit Talkspace.com slash military murder to get $100 off your first month and to show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash military murder. The investigators didn't want to take any chances, so they attempted to impound the Lance Corporal's car. But by the time they conduct this follow-up interview, which was a few days after Christina was murdered, the Lance Corporal had, surprise, surprise, vacuumed the car. And get this, he sold the car the day after Christina went missing. <laughs> But most of his inconsistent statements were made before he was provided the incrimination warnings, which I'm assuming are similar to Miranda warnings in the U.S. You know, the ones that say you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, yada, yada. So I'm assuming that this violation caused some sort of ordeal causing any statements that he made before he was given these warnings to be inadmissible in a court of law. This Lance Corporal was the main and only suspect in Christina's murder. And because both the alleged perpetrator and the victim had a connection to the military, the NATO Status of Forces Agreement, which is often called the SOFA, it allowed the German public prosecutor to waive the right to primary jurisdiction. And while all parties involved, including the police advisor for the British service liaison, the German prosecutor and the service authorities 
They thought that a court-martial was the most appropriate avenue to seek justice in Christina's case. Well, in February of 1994, the 24-year-old Lance Corporal was court-martialed by the British Armed Forces for the murder of Christina Menzies. And in a shocking twist that no one expected, the Lance Corporal was acquitted of all of the charges and he walked away a free man. John and Christine Menzies were rightfully upset, angry, outraged to say the least. They knew they had their guy right in front of them and like a ghost, he slipped right out of their grasp. Now in their mind, this savage child killer was allowed to return to the British military to complete his commitment to serve his country. Well, the Menzies said, screw that jazz, we have to do something about this. So you all may be wondering why I am not providing the name of the Lance Corporal who was ultimately acquitted. And my reason is that he was acquitted. The Royal Air Force, the Royal Armed Forces, they had their day in court and a jury of his peers considered the evidence and felt that it was weak and they chose to acquit the Lance Corporal. So that's why I haven't shared his name and I won't. But the Menzies, they didn't give a flip, acquittal or no acquittal. They thought that the Lance Corporal should pay. Who was he to get a real world get out of jail free card, they thought. And I'm not familiar at all with British law or the court system there. But all I know is that the Menzies petitioned the Labour MP for Glasgow, a man by the name of Mr. George Galloway. I imagine that this is similar to a person in the U.S. asking their congressperson for help in a specific matter. Well, in 1995, even after the Lance Corporal's acquittal, Mr. Galloway used parliamentary privilege and declared the Lance Corporal was Christina Menzies' killer, and he called him out by name. Gilbert Blades, who was the Lance Corporal's attorney, was shocked. How dare you call out my client like that, he thought. Quote, my client is extremely upset by the way events have unfolded because he was tried and acquitted. He has all along protested his innocence and to pursue him in this way is very cruel, end quote. But Galloway didn't care. Although when Mr. Blades invited Galloway to name his client in public without the protection of parliament, Mr. Galloway basically said, hard pass. I found the transcript of the exchange between Galloway and the parliament and in an interesting use of words, Galloway basically said that the military investigators and the prosecutors, they screwed the pooch on this case. Quote, the military police who are just soldiers with armbands and the military prosecutor who's just a soldier with a wig, they bungled the case. The murderer then walked free and is still at large, serving in Her Majesty's services. Is it not about time we overhauled the archaic system of military justice, which is widely discredited? End quote. Dang! Yup, Mr. Galloway went there. I found his word choice very eloquent. Can you imagine how ballsy it is to say the military prosecutor is just a soldier with a wig? Well, even with this word choice, Parliament didn't bat an eye. They said, listen, dear, the military investigators interviewed over 300 service members, dependents and civilians. They left no stone unturned. They did everything in their power to investigate the case, period, dot. And seemingly with this, the case basically went cold. After the Lance Corporal was acquitted, Christina's murder case file remained or remains open to this day. But the authorities haven't really looked any further for a new suspect. But the Menzies have continued to fight the good fight. And as reported by Scarlett Howes from Mirror.co, she reported this in 2014, the Royal Military Police conducted an independent investigation into how Christina Menzies' case was investigated and they concluded that, quote, there were grounds for reinvestigation, end quote. It's unclear what this means, but this is huge news.
With each passing year, the Menzies are not giving up hope that their daughter's killer will be found. In 2017, BBC Crime Watch aired a special on the unsolved murder of Christina Benzies. And for the first time ever, the Royal Military Police made a public request for information, a public plea for help. Captain Teresa Spanton from the RMP was the spokesperson. She believes there are two items out there that might lead to solving this murder. And the first piece of evidence is that the police believe that Christina's body was wrapped in a Union Jack quilt cover. That item was never recovered, and it's unclear why Captain Spanton has this belief, but there must be a reason. But there's one more thing that has never been found, and that's Christina's shoes. On the night of her murder, Christina was wearing black leather heeled shoes with a crossover strap with a metal buckle. It kind of formed like an X over her, the top of her shoe. Captain Spanton believes that these two items, the Union Jack quilt cover and the missing shoes may hold the answer to who killed Christina. In 2018, on the 25th anniversary of their daughter's death, John and Christine appealed to the public yet again. They reckon that they're stuck in limbo. They are stuck back in 1993, not being able to move on with their life because they just cannot move on without justice being had for their daughter. In 2020, just this year, Christina's mom made another public plea. She said that she's convinced that someone in the military has the answer. She understands that the military community sticks together and protects their own. But she's hoping that with the passage of time, the people who are so far removed from the military environment might finally be willing to provide some closure to her and her family. Christina's dad went on to finish his 23-year military career but he still cannot believe that he had to lose his daughter in such a tragic way while serving his country. Something that broke my heart in this case is what Christine Menzies, Christina's mom, told the Glasgow Times. She said, quote, Christina was a dependent, a nobody under British military law. She wasn't even entitled to her own name on her death certificate. She was described only as the daughter of Staff Sergeant John Menzies, end quote. And to top it off, after Christina's death, John and Christine received a bill from the army for the cost of returning Christina's body to the UK. Oh, that's so dreadful. However, Staff Sergeant Menzies' commanding officer paid the bill. Thank goodness for that person, because that is just so, so tragic. In Mr. Menzies' plea to the public, he is asking, no, you know what? He is begging for the public's help. Quote, it won't bring Christina back, but it would give her justice and would give us a feeling of closure. I don't want Christina and what happened to get forgotten or to be left behind. I don't want it to be parked under all the unsolved cases in Germany. I want it to be solved once and for all so that we can all get closure, end quote. Christina's family has partnered with Crime Stoppers UK to try and get answers. Anyone with information on Christina's murder can contact Crime Stoppers UK at www.crimestoppers-uk.org. They are offering £20,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of Christina's killer. So are any of you wondering about double jeopardy if new evidence reveals that the Lance Corporal is in fact the killer? I mean, he was tried back in 1994. How could they try him again? Well, remember the U.S. case of Timothy Hennis? I covered this case in episode three. He was acquitted in civilian trial, civilian court, and then after evidence, new evidence tied him to a triple murder, He was, although he was retired from the military, he was brought back to the military to be tried by court martial. Well, this may be the same case with Christina Menzies. I I don't know for sure, but maybe. 
I did a quick search of double jeopardy laws in the UK and Scotland, and it seems to show that more recently, double jeopardy has gained some exceptions, including one, when the suspect in a case intimidates a witness or a juror in the acquittal case, two, where the person acquitted later admits that they did, they, they committed the crime, and three, in a situation where there is new and compelling evidence. So maybe that's what they're looking for in this case. Anyway, regardless of the outcome, the Menzies just want answers. So please help me share this episode with everyone you know, especially anyone overseas in the UK, in Germany, or in Scotland. Crazy case, right? The Menzies have dedicated their lives to finding Christina's killer. And that to me is just sad because not only was Christina's life cut short, but so was the life of her mom and dad and her family. All over what? A senseless murder. All right. For more information, make sure that you follow me on social media where I often post pictures for each week's case. And in this case, I will be posting a picture of what those shoes might have looked like and also a picture of Christina Menzies. If you listen to this podcast, you should be following me on social, whichever one you prefer, whichever social media platform you prefer. I am on Instagram at Military Murder Podcast, on Facebook at Military True Crime, and on Twitter at Military Murder. Also, don't forget to tag me in your daily activities when you listen to Military Murder. And if you're lucky, I will share your post or story with my followers. Now, I would like to acknowledge members of the True Crime Army that have left reviews. Did you know that by leaving a review, it increases the status of my podcast on the top 200 podcast list? Yes, it sure does. And every time I see a review, a new review, it makes me just so happy. It makes me my heart like skip a beat. Okay. So today I want to start with my Stitcher review because I know that my listeners who leave reviews on Stitcher, they have to take an extra step by actually leaving the review on a computer. So here goes. Shout out to Jacqueline B who practically follows me everywhere. She's awesome. Love her. National Guard wife, Annie, Linbug25 and Debror. 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 <laughs> Extra special kudos to Deborah, who says, quote, Margot can tell a new story, an old story, one you've heard a billion times, but not from Margot. She makes it real in a good way. Keep going, girl. I'm not connected to the military by family, so this helps me feel closer to those who sacrifice so much for my family and me, including this insane Margot podcaster who has two little ones and a military full-time job, end quote. <laughs> Yes, girl, I'm a little bit crazy. This is a fact. And thank you to you for listening. On Facebook, many of you have come through leaving reviews on there. And just so you know, there is a review button on Facebook. So you can just click that review and leave your review there. I appreciate all the comments and awesome reviews that you guys are leaving on posts that I make. But make sure you go over on the review button and leave a review there. So... Shout out to Sarah C, Felicia R, Cassidy H, Amber S, Letitia L, Caitlin S, Jean Marie C, or Jean Marie C, not sure, Chantel W, Natasha R. I see you, girl, leaving reviews on both Facebook and Castbox. Double kudos to you. Who else? We have Aura Jani S W, Mia H, Lisa P M, Cindy C S, Yvette A, Brandy K. And last but not least, Kristen M. Some Apple podcast reviews as well. Shout out to Skate9494, Joe Krabs92, Z007, Fancy Vancy, and Burr29, Army of Three, Worldwide75040, Texas Grandma of Two, and Veron is MTZ. I want to give an extra special shout out to Veronica. She was that last person I just said, Veronica's MTZ. She left a review on, on Apple iTunes and she is specialist Enrique Roman Martinez's sister. 
If you recall, I covered his unsolved murder case in episode 35. Well, Veronica left the kindest words, and I just want to remind everyone to keep sharing these episodes, especially the unsolved cases. I know that Veronica and her family started the Justice for Enrique Roman Martinez Instagram account to bring awareness to his case. So if you aren't already following that account, it's Justice for Enrique Roman Martinez, all one word on Instagram. I encourage you to go on Instagram today and follow that account. They are helping to bring awareness about Enrique's case and hoping that someone, anyone will come forward with information about Enrique's murder. I just want to do an update as well. When I covered the case, Enrique's case, the reward was at $15,000. Army CID recently raised the, that amount for the reward to $25,000. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who listens, downloads, follows me on social media, and also leaves these kind reviews. It means the world to me. It's just little old me sitting here at one in the morning telling you these stories because I think that it's so important to tell these stories. Okay, so that's it for this episode. This show was created and produced by Mama Margot Productions and the music was created by TIOPS. Please check the show notes for a direct link to my sources page on my website, militarymurderpodcast.com. Until next time, remember, you never really know what someone is capable of. So remain vigilant always. You have a fabulous week and I'll keep digging to bring you another military murder story next week. <laughs> Shh, let's work another podcast.